coffee. I like military style. You let it sit for the day and yeah. Well, welcome. God bless you guys. It's good to be in the house of the Lord today. We're going to go ahead and get started, and we're just so awesome, so honored to be in the presence of the Lord and, and to worship Him. It's going to be an awesome day today. Uh, let's all stand to our feet if we can, and let's, let's begin to just come into His presence. For you that are watching online, it's great to have you with us, and we pray that you'd come, come here and visit us here in the South Bay. We have also another uh, campus out in the Valley, which will be going out here later today. But God bless you. It's a good time to come together and worship the Lord. Amen. Amen. So let's pray. Let's ask God to come and touch this, this time together. Lord, we bless you. We thank you, Father, for all that you're doing. We pray that God, in the name of your son, Jesus, that God, you would come and, and you would uh, transform lives today. I pray that God, anyone that's burdened or carrying anything, Father, today, it would be lifted off in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, because Lord, we've come to worship you and to glorify your name. And everybody said, amen, amen and amen. Forever defeated, now it is 
praise God. Praise God. Praise God. From whom all blessings flow. Praise Him. Praise Him. For the wonders of your love. Praise. Praise God. Praise God. From whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, praise Him for the wonders of His love. For God so loved the world that He gave us, His one and only Son to save us. Whoever believes in Him shall live forever. is waiting God God so loved the world Amen. Hallelujah Lord we love you Jesus Hallelujah Hallelujah Lord
He's a mighty God. Amen. Amen. today. Amen. Amen. Isn't it feel good to be in the house of the Lord? God is great. God bless you guys. I'm glad you're all here. Why don't you uh, 
get out of your seats, say hi to somebody today, welcome them to the house of the Lord, and just be friendly today. Hey, good to see you. God bless you. Yeah, brother. Good morning. Good morning. Lord, you guys can have a seat, and we're just going to go through a couple things today. I we we, we uh, are starting our pre-launch service. Actually, next uh, in, in our next service will be out in the valley. Uh, the new time there is three forty-five, uh, and so we're going to we have another campus, and we found a new location, um, and so we're really excited about that. And it's going to start a new time at three forty-five. We're calling it a pre-launch. I should get back into what we're doing there. And um, it's a way for us to kind of get in there, get settled, and then we're gonna start up a food program and all kinds of cool stuff because the facilities there are gonna allow us to do that, to start reaching out to people all in that whole area. So we're really excited about that. And uh, so it starts at 345. Now, I mentioned that in the last few weeks and I think people thought go there instead of here. So I don't know if that's exactly what happened, but that might, I know some people called and were thinking that's what that was going to happen. So I don't know if they're choosing that or not, but in any case, we're here today. Amen. We're going to have a good time today and we're going to praise the Lord and have a, have a good time in Jesus. Uh, again, it starts at 345. If you'd like to go, um, maybe you could find somebody who, if you need a ride, you can find somebody who wants to go or is going and get a ride. If not, let me know and we'll see what we can do to get you out there. Um, it's going to be a good time. So service actually starts at 345 at the new campus, and uh, it will go to about 5, 515, probably 5, and then you guys can uh, take off or join us for an incredible Filipino feast, <laughs> right? That's probably the best way to say it. They, they cook like, oh my gosh, man, you can't get on a diet going there, I'm telling you. But um, in any case... It's a, it's, a good, it's a good thing, and I encourage you guys to be a part of that if you guys can come. We'd love that to, for you to come. Uh, Tuesday nights is our women's prayer night. Don't forget that. It's on Zoom. It was uh, postponed this last Tuesday, but it will pick back up next Tuesday for our women. It is a great time to come and pray. Our Thursday nights have been incredible. Just, I think, it, it really good for fellowship, for men on one side, women on the other side, and uh, women had more this time than, than the men. So men, you got to show up. Amen. We beat them last. We beat them the following week, but uh, we're not, we're not too much competition here. You can tell, but in any case, I want to encourage you guys to come be a part of Thursday night here at the church at seven o'clock. And of course we have a Bible study that's happening on zoom, but it's happening in the Valley. So if you ever want to be a part of a, a Bible study with the Valley uh, church, uh, they meet at the home, but it's on uh, on Zoom as well. It's on Friday nights. You can get there by going to rocksolidchurch.com. Uh, we also have our birthday celebrations coming up. All right. Anybody have a birthday this, this month? Well, you got to find somebody. That's your assignment, right? And bring them to church because that's a great place to have uh, uh, an outreach to people who have a birthday. Say, come, my church will celebrate that with you, all right? Also remember, June 4th is gonna be an outreach at Cabrillo Beach. We're gonna have a, some food and fellowship and just a time to hang out as a church, amen, and, and reach out to some new people to bring them into the kingdom of God, amen. Well, let's go ahead and get ready to give today. It's time to give to the Lord. And thank you guys for your support and your help and your, uh, your giving. If you are online watching, you can go to rocksolidchurch.com 
and there's a give button at the top. You can give that way. Uh, there's also a app that we have called Givelify. That's right, Givelify. Givelify. I always say that. Give a fly. Give a fly. Um, so be careful how you say that. But in any case, it's an it's an app that uh, you can get, and you can just find our church, and you can give at any time. You can do recurring, or you can just give as you feel led to give by by God. So I want to encourage you to do that. So let's go ahead and give our tithes, our offerings today, and let's ask God to bless this time. So. Lord, we thank you, Father, for all that you're doing here, and, and Lord, we pray that, Lord, you would bless the tithe and bless the giver, and I pray today that, God, that, um, Lord, everyone today would be blessed, God, for coming and worshiping you. I pray that, God, as we walk out of this place, we'd be different than the way we came in, but I pray that, Father, as we give today, that, God, you would bless those who need a job with a job, those who need a better job, that, God, you would open the door for be a better job. I pray for increase in pay. I pray for benefits and insurance and special benefits because you are a good God. And I pray for even checks that come in the mail. And we thank you for all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Never ceases to amaze me when I pray checks in the mail. We got something that came in and just a little bit, but I don't care if it's a little bit or a lot of bit, right? A lot of bit, that's a word, right? I got my master's degree, I could say a lot of bit. Okay, a little bit or a lot of bit, but it, whatever you whatever you do, God God's, God blesses. Amen? Amen. So let's all let, one more time. Let's all stand to our feet. We're going to sing this new song that we brought out, and we're just going to come in the presence of the Lord. And it's just a song that is kind of new out there. It's called "I Speak Jesus." Jesus. Amen. I speak Jesus, and how many know that? Sometimes that's all we can do is just say the name of Jesus. Right. That's right. Some things don't make sense. The Bible says that his ways are not our ways. Um, and sometimes all we can do is just trust God in the midst of, of the storms that we find ourselves in. And that's what this song is really about, about speaking the name of Jesus. In the 
darkness over every enemy. Jesus, for my family, I speak the holy name. God is good. Amen. Give somebody a high five next to you if you have one there and just tell them something good's going to happen today. Amen. God is good. God is good. <clears throat> Thank you guys. That was, that was a, I love that song. It said, Lord, don't let my fingers fail me now, right? Amen. Amen. It's fun to play the keyboard, haven't done that in a little while, and uh, just a blessing from the Lord, and we're just grateful for all that he's doing in, in our lives, and um, I want to do something a little different today, uh, kind of staying in the same kind of track where we have been, and we're going to continue of the journey, but today I want to really talk about the kingdom, the kingdom of God, and to understand the power and the importance of the kingdom, the kingdom of God, that we're a part of a kingdom. We're no longer of this earth any longer. Our residence isn't here even though we have a mailing address. But our new residence now is truly in heaven. And we are now literally the sons and daughters of God. And and I'll tell you, it's sometimes difficult in this life because this life reminds us over and over again that we belong here. And it discourages us. It, 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 there'll be moments in life where you're up and you're down. Um, but when we remember that we're part of a kingdom, we are now translated in the spirit in a different dimension of our life. Let me explain it this way. Paul and Silas are in jail. They're, they're shackled down. There's no way they can get out. Yet they realize they weren't from this earth This earth does not like them any longer, doesn't love us any longer because we believe in the Lord. And this, the powers of the air, the principalities, Satan is fighting against us. And so Paul, in the midst of of that prison, what did he do? He started to worship God. Right there, as he worshiped the Lord, he remembered, I'm part of the kingdom of God. And the kingdom showed up, brought an earthquake, shook the place, and released them from their shackles. And how many know today we are part of a kingdom? Amen. How many believe today life isn't always fair, right? It's not always fair. Things come, things go. We get attacked in so many different ways, and it can be so discouraging. But listen, 
God, his kingdom is here. And we're going to learn how to access that kingdom daily in our lives, in the moment we need it. Because Jesus said the kingdom of God is here and it's at hand. It's here now. And the children of Israel, when they left Mount Sinai, God is reacquainting them with really who they are supposed to be. Not only the children of Israel in this world, but the children of Israel who are part of the kingdom of God who are in this world. And they were going to be a city on a hill that would be a light to the nations of the earth. And they had to understand that they had to now become kingdom-minded. Someone say kingdom-minded. It's important that our minds think like the kingdom, that we meditate on the things above. We would wash our minds with the, with the word of the Lord. Amen? Because it's our minds that are, are, are where the battleground is. <clears throat> so we have to change our mindset. There was a sign that was hung on an office window and it read, help wanted. Uh, must type 70 words a minute. Must be a computer, computer literate. Uh, must be bilingual. And we're an equal opportunity employer. And this dog happened to be walking by. Got away from his master and looked up and grabbed it out of, with his teeth and walked in and pointed with his eyes and the Manager realized that this dog's applying for this job. And so he was very ambitious and he, he could tell and he said uh, to the dog who pointed to the point that says an equal opportunity uh, job. And so the manager asked and said, okay, um, take this letter and go type it. And the dog, of course, can't speak and grabbed it and went off. And a few moments later came back perfectly typed out. Gave it to him. He said, hmm. He says, all right, here's a problem. Go get a computer and program it and figure out the problem. And the dog ran off and came back. And sure enough, that problem was figured out. Fifteen minutes later, he came back. And, and again, the, the manager still was not convinced. And he says, well, listen, I still can't hire you because this is a position that you must be bilingual. And the dog looked at him and said, Meow. <laughs> I know that's pretty dumb, but in any case. And how many you know that sometimes we have to look at things differently in the kingdom, right? Things don't always make sense, but with God, everything works out. And so let's get our Bibles. We're going to get into this. And in the next service, I'm going to have on the kingdom of God, but it won't be the same message. So if you do come out, you're not going to hear the same thing. We're going to just have a good time today in the presence of the Lord. Matthew 9 and verse 14, I want to share with you about the kingdom of God. The children of Israel leaving Mount Sinai, they were moving in to the promised land and they had to become kingdom minded. They had to think about the kingdom, they had to be a part of the kingdom. This world gives no opportunities for us to think that we're part of the kingdom. It's discouraging. People don't always trust each other. There's fights. There's all kinds of things. But in the kingdom, there is, there is favor and blessing. <clears throat> and so Matthew 9 and 14 is this passage we're going to pick up with about Jesus speaking to the Pharisees of a new, a new thing that's coming. And that they were stuck in old things, but they needed to open their heart and mind to the new that is coming. And this is what it says. Then the disciples of John came to him saying, why do, you, why do we and the Pharisees fast often, but your disciples do not fast? Verse 15, and Jesus said to them, can the friend of the bridegroom mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them? But the days will come when the bridegroom will be taken away from them and then they will fast. So what he's saying is, when I, I'm with you, it's time to rejoice. He was in the physical flesh. He was with them. Time to rejoice. And then he says, but I'll be taken away. And at that time, you'll fast for the kingdom to come, for the kingdom. When Jesus would return and set up his kingdom to be kingdom mind. And fasting really helps us enter in to the kingdom, amen, to draw in the kingdom. And Jesus begins to share with them about this idea of fasting. But listen to what he says in verse 16 and 17. He says, no one puts a piece of unshrunk cloth on an old garment, except for my mother. Uh, she would do that, right? Because she'd take old jeans and sew something on and give it to me. 
for my brother, but unshrunk cloth on an old garment. For the patch pulls away from the garment and the tear is made worse. So you don't put something new on something old. You don't put a new cloth on an old cloth. The old cloth can't hold the new that's coming. That's what he's saying. Verse 17, nor do they put new wine in old wineskins or else the wineskin breaks and the wine is spilled and the wineskins are ruined. But they put new wine into new wineskins and both are preserved. So what he's talking to the Pharisees and really to the children of Israel is this idea that we can't enter the kingdom with old things. There has to be old things passed away before all things become new. When we give our life to Jesus, he says that very thing. Old things passed away. Behold, all things are new. And Jesus is now coming to put uh, the gospel, the good news, onto the people. And they were stuck in old traditions, old ways. Old, I'm, not, I'm not saying old ways. They were good for a time. The wineskins, old wineskins were good for a time. But there is something new that's coming. Now, I'm going to share with you in just a moment about the power of, of the kingdom. And what I want to talk to you today is this idea of, of replacing what's old for something that's new. Is anybody here ready to replace something that was old for something that's new? Now, don't look at your husband right now. This is not the time for that. I'm talking about something different here, right? You know, something old for something new. Somebody shout amen to that, right? So what I'm saying is there, is, there has to be something old that has to die for something new to come. And when we give our life to the Lord, that old man is dead and the new man comes, right? The old things that we used to think about are dead, the new things come. But isn't it funny how those things try to follow us along, right? They try to be a part of our lives. And that's why we've got to deny uh, ourself, deny, you know, uh, you know, counselors will say, you know, uh, let's go to your past and find out your problem. And the problem with all of us of our past is our past. Somebody shout Amen. I mean, if I, if I sit and talk about my past for two years, I'm going to be more depressed. Because all I'm thinking about is my past. This is what, it, this is what, I, what I did. Now, there's nothing wrong with going back and, and, and trying to identify some things to, to realize what I'm doing. But then I have to let that go to move on to new things. And, and the problem with, with that kind of idea of, 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 of counseling, the Bible says get godly counsel, right? Godly counsel will help us to do what? To think about the kingdom. Yeah, you're a sinner, but God's got you covered. Yeah, you blew it, but, God, but we're all sinners and we all fall short of the glory of God. This is who you're supposed to be. You're a child of God. You're not the child of your mother or father any longer. You might have had a bad childhood, but God is your, God, is your father. And when I start looking at who I'm supposed to be, looking into the mirror, I start to realize who I'm supposed to be versus realizing that we're all sinners and we all fall short of the glory of God. Somebody shout amen. And in order for me to have something new in my life, I've got to let go of something old. And the children of Israel had to come out of Egypt. They had to come out of that land of slavery. They had to let the past go. Literally, let your past go. Your past does not define you for, define you for your future. Amen? All it does is give you a testimony of the goodness of God. And so now... There's something new that is coming. And Jesus says that new thing can't support the old things. This comes into the idea in the kingdom of God, and you can write this down, of the law of replacement. There is a law in the scriptures or a teaching or an understanding of the law of replacement. <clears throat> See, God doesn't, um, he doesn't come to us and change us a little bit. He transforms us into something new. When, when, we, when we die and the resurrection takes place, the Bible says that we shall be changed. We're not going to be what we used to be. We're going to be changed to who we're supposed to be. And that good news that God is always focused on what we're supposed to be and what we're supposed to become and what he has for our lives. And what, what's in front of me is, is what I'm to focus on. Paul says what? He says, 
press for the mark of the high calling of God, which is in Christ Jesus. No, he says, forgetting those things which, this is first what he says, forget those things which are behind and reach to the things by the high calling of God. Press towards those things. Forget what's behind. What's behind is behind. What's behind can't be changed. What's behind has been done. What's behind has happened. But it does not define you any longer. It is now dead in Christ. And what the Pharisees had to learn and what Israel had to learn is that they weren't going back to Egypt. They were not going back to that old life. It is going to be a new life now in Christ. Hallelujah. Everything is new. And I love what he says that morning might last for the night, but joy comes in the morning. His mercies are new every single day day and if we don't learn to walk in the new we're going to be bound by the old we're going to be stunted by yesterday we're going to be discouraged by last week we're going to be put down in our by the enemy by the things we did in the past somebody shout amen Now, that doesn't mean that we don't identify on things of our past to help us get to our future. I get that. But what I am saying is everything that now in Christ lies in front of us. The promised land was in front of them. The the, the kings that were coming to the land were in front of them. Those the only thing of our past were the in Israel is they made markers. And those markers were the times when God brought them through. When they had a deficiency, they had a difficulty, they had something they couldn't get over, but God showed up and they marked it. That's where I got victory. That's where God helped. That's where God brought me out. Somebody shout amen. And so the law of replacement, old wineskins can't handle new wineskins or the new wine can't hold handle old wineskins. It has to be into something brand new so this comes to a place called the law of replacement now i I think i missed that but i want to share this the law of replacement means the action or process of replacing something so it's really what it is it's the act or the process of replacing something now think about it two objects can't occupy the same space I mean, you try. I'm going to stand right here and somebody else stand right here. I'm not going to let it happen. No, it's a, it just won't happen. Two objects cannot occupy the same space. Something has to fall. And so we have to understand that if I want something new, that I can't, something's going to give. Something is not going to be able to stand in that place. My depression won't stand in that place of my victory. That worry won't stand in the place of my worship. When I start to get into the kingdom, something's got to give up. Something has to break. Something can't stay. Why? Because there's a replacement taking place. Let me say it this way. Jesus said throughout Scripture, he said the seed has to die before it lives law of replacement you've got to give before it is given back to you pressed down shaken together the law of replacement when your enemy uh, treats you unfairly and asks you to walk a mile law of replacement you could be bitter instead you go that's fine i'll give you two miles because i'm going to tell you about jesus the other mile I'm going to take my bad situation and I'm going to turn it into something good. Somebody shout amen. The law of replacement is all the way through the scriptures that God says to Jacob. He says, Jacob, your your name is no longer going to be called Jacob, heel catcher. Your name is now going to be called Israel. Amen. The father of nations that that, that God's going to turn your, your, your life around. Amen. There's this idea of the law of replacement. Remember Naomi and Ruth in the book of Ruth? The Bible says that Naomi went to Moab. The, 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 the bread dried up in, in Judah. And Judah means praise. When we don't praise, the bread dries up. 
When we don't get in the presence of the Lord, the, 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 the things we need don't, don't show up in our lives. So she went to Moab to find provision. She left the place of praise to go find provision in Moab. And when she was in Moab, her sons died. She, it, all kinds of problems happened. But the Bible says, and if you read it, it, it's only four chapters of Ruth, powerful book. And it says, when she heard that there was bread in Judah, she, re- she was going to return. Come on, somebody. When praise was restored in Judah, the bread started to flow. The newness came. Somebody shout amen. And so what she do? She says, I'm going to go. And, and Ruth was decided she's going to cling to her. She's going to follow. She follows along. And when she comes back, she, the children of Israel look and they say, here comes Naomi. She's back. And Naomi says, don't call me Naomi any longer. She says, you know, she comes up with a different name, which means bitter. Mara. She said, don't, don't call me Naomi. Call me Mara. And the thing is, she labeled herself with something God never labeled her with. She labeled herself as bitter, as angry, as frustrated. And how many of us have labeled ourselves with something the Lord has not called us to be. I'm dumb. I'm, I'm not good enough. I'm not a good mom. I'm not a good dad. I'm not a good enough of this. I can't do this. I'm too old. I'm too young. I'm too good looking. <laughs> Whatever it might be. I'm just going to go there. Right? Whatever it might be. And we, now we, we are now stuck. Why? Because we labeled ourselves with something that God never labeled us with. There has to be a replacement. God has to replace the old with something that's new. And we need not, not just renewing only of our mind. We need the transforming of our mind according to Romans 12 and verse 2 for the renewing of our mind and the transformation of our mind is the newness. And how many of you ready for the new things of the Lord, the new things of 2022, the new things of 2023? You go, yeah, but there's so many problems in the world. Yeah, and they will always be there. But does it matter if, if life's good, stock market's up, stock market's down, your, 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 your retirement plan's up or down? We're going to praise the Lord in the midst of it all. Somebody shout amen. Why? Because how do I replace what was old with something new. I need new wineskins. I need to look at life in a different way. And so the law of replacement is so, so powerful and so needed for every single one of us here today. I want you to turn your Bibles to Mark chapter 1. Mark chapter 1. Mark 1 and 14. This is what Jesus says. He says, now after John was put in prison, Jesus came to Galilee preaching what? The gospel of the kingdom of God. I want you to hear that. What was Jesus preaching? The kingdom of God. The good news, gospel means good news, the good news of the kingdom of God. In this life, you're sick. In that life, you're well. In this life, you're you're, you're at the bottom. At that life, you are not the, you're the head, not the tail. In in, in this life, you, you, you face worries. But Jesus said, don't worry about anything for today is enough of its own. I'm gonna get you through. I feed the birds. I take care of the grass of the fields. And whatever you're going through, I've got you covered. Somebody shout amen. And it's very important that he came to preach the gospel of the kingdom. And what he, want, what he was doing is he was putting something new on something old. He was bringing the newness of the kingdom into our lives. And that means that us too are now called to preach. Listen to what it says in verse 15. And saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is where? Is at hand. Means it's now. Someone say now. Your situation can change now. You, 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 whatever you're going through can change now. The kingdom 
is not bound by time, by space, by your problems, by the worries, by the devil. The Bible says neither death nor height nor angels nor principalities or powers or rulers of darkness can separate us from the love of God. Hallelujah. He can get to you even in Daniel chapter 9 and 10 when Daniel prayed and fasted. On the first day, God said, I, I heard you on the first day, but it took 21 days for that angel to get through those principalities and powers and rulers of darkness. But he comes and, he's, and he hears you the first day. How many of you know that there were, there were principalities and powers and rulers of darkness? The, the heavens we see are the heavens of the skies. Beyond that is a layer of demonic activity. This place where the devil and his angels go back and forth accusing us before God day and night. Look at Job chapter 1, 6 through 9. It tells us that Job still goes, I mean, that Satan still goes up back and forth. He's accusing the brethren. Don't understand it all, but there is battles that are going on. And the devil is the prince of the power of the airs. He's in the second heavens, I believe. And, and the first heavens are what we see. The second heavens are there. But the Bible says in Revelation that one day the heavens will roll up like a scroll. And you know what's going to happen when, when the sheet, when the veil is torn? The first veil was torn when Jesus died on the cross. That first veil was torn. There's a second veil. It's heaven's veil where God's looking down beyond this veil. It's like a, a mirror that you can see out but no one can see in. And he can look down. He can see he's among us. But one day when Jesus returns and, and the final battle is won and the final enemy is won, which is death, hallelujah, 1 Corinthians 15, 26, death will be conquered and they'll be swallowed up by victory when the veil is broken and now and what's going to happen is Jesus is sitting on the throne and all of heaven's going to see this veil open up in the skies of heaven and there's Jesus and God they're going to go hide us from the lamb who's come the second veil is going to be ripped it's ripped at the cross it's finished for us to come start coming in through Christ but one day it's going to rent in heaven. Remember, he says, rent the heavens and come down. Rent them. Tear that, sh that, that final veil. Why? So that everything's new. The kingdom of God is at hand. And if I want to get free, I can get free now. Sometimes I get free now and I have to walk it out for 21 days. Sometimes I have to walk it out for 21 years. But it doesn't mean that God isn't already worked it out when, he, when you called on his name. Lord, free me today. God, touch my family. God, do something. And what Jesus came to do, and Mark here tells us, uh, Mark 4, 1, 14, he came to proclaim the kingdom, the good news of the kingdom. And what are we to do? We're to proclaim the good news of the kingdom. Amen? Oh, did you hear the bad report? Yeah, I heard the bad report. But let me give you a good report. God is able to turn everything around. Hallelujah. Amen? There is always the report of the Lord. I love that old song, right? Whose report shall you believe? We shall believe the report of the Lord. Amen? Ask your neighbor, to say, what report are you going to believe? Tell them, ask them that. Amen? What report? What report? I'm going to re re receive the report of the Lord. Now, he says, it's at hand. How do, we get, how, do we, how do we get into the kingdom, this new thing? It says, repent, change course, get out of the old, get into the new, repent, turn around, get away from that, move this way, believe. It doesn't say work, work hard. There's other scriptures that teach us to work hard. But what he's saying here is that we've got to believe. Believe in the gospel. Repent and believe the kingdom. It's at hand. It's here. It's now. And the children of Israel struggled in the book of Numbers over and over again trying to get out of the wilderness because they could not get out of the old to get into the new. And how many today are ready to get out of the old and get into the new? It's going to take the law of replacement. You got to replace your words. You got to replace your time. You got to replace the talents you have and using them for the kingdom. The Bible says you, you, you have not, but when you do ask, you ask amiss because what you're asking for is for your own good, for your own pleasure. 
You're asking for things so that you have pleasure from them. And he says, that's why it's, you're not getting the things you're asking for because everything you're asking for is just, Lord, give me a new car, give me a new home, give me a new iPhone, give me, give me, give me, give me. Give me, Jimmy, Jimmy says, give me, give me, right? And we've got to, we can't always be in the give, you know, in that way. We, we have to pray kingdom, kingdom, kingdom. And when you pray kingdom and you pray, you proclaim the kingdom, the kingdom shows up in our life. He gives you what you need. He gives you excess to give to others. He starts to bring the kingdom into your life. Somebody shout amen. So the kingdom is at hand. Now, I want you to go to Luke chapter 9. Luke chapter 9. And we're going to look at the first verse of Luke 9. Luke 9 verse 1. And this is what it says. One day, one day, Jesus called together his 12 disciples. And now listen to what it says. And he gave them. I like that. And he gave them power and authority. Right? It wasn't like he gave them the keys to a new car. Gave them the keys to a nice house. He gave them power and authority. What would he do with it? If you needed something that you didn't have power and you didn't have the status to get, but he gave you the means to get it, what would you do with it? And here, he doesn't give them what they need, per se, in the natural, the, the things of this world. He gives them the kingdom. I give you power and I give you authority. They have the kingdom. Now, stay with me for a moment. To cast out all demons. Someone say all. Say all, all means is all. <laughs> Too hard to say. All, all means is all, right? It's everything. All demons. And to heal all diseases. So we have the power and authority, and how do we, as God's people, walk in that power and walk in that authority that God's given to us? Now, some things, the kingdom of God's at hand, and, and it immediately happens. I love the immediate miracles. How many love the immediate miracles? You know, it's like, I immediately need $1,000. There it is, you know, I paid my rent. I love that, you know. I love the immediate things. But then, I, you know, the other one says, okay, I'm going to provide, trust me, and you have to, you know, you're going through it for a few weeks or month or whatever, and, and, but yet he's still going to provide. The power and authority is what we need for the law of replacement. In order for us to replace the old, I have to realize I have the power and authority for new things in my life and to operate in the kingdom of God. How do I have the power for that? I am a child of God. I mean, a, 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 a kid doesn't need to come home. Mom, can I come in? Uh, let me see. Mom, can I, I want to come in. I, I'm home. Uh, how have you been today? Not, not good. Okay, stay outside for a while. No, a child is able to come home. You tell them where the key is. Right? We had a key under the pot. It's on the third pot over to the left. Don't try to get into my house. Right? But they come and they take the, the key and they, we just go and unlock the door and we come in. I didn't have to ask permission from my mom every time I came home to come into the kingdom of the house. And the same thing is true with God. We do not have to always ask this permission to come in. We are now child of God, of, 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 of children of God. And he says, I've given you power and I'm giving you authority over every demon and over every sickness. We have the power. Amen? Now, how do we use it? What do we use it for? How do I get the law of replacement working in my life so that what I had that I don't want becomes something new. Sometimes we're so used to the old that we stay in the old because we don't know how to function in the new. So the old becomes so familiar. The old is what we always do. And so if I change that, what do I change into? Somebody shout amen. 
And so, so many people have the Linus syndrome. You know what that is, right? The, you know, the Linus, Linus and Snoopy, you know, he had that dirty old stinky blanket. Remember that? And everywhere he went, there was little flies on it, little, had little things on it, little dirt. You know, it was all penciled, you know, and he's all walking around. And they, this one episode, they came in and they, 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 he was sleeping and they stole his old blanket and they gave him a brand new one. And they, it was funny that it was all penciled and it looked all shiny. And he woke up and he's like, oh my gosh, who took my blanket? And they said, Linus, we gave you a brand new blanket. It's gonna, it doesn't smell, it's perfect, it's great, you can live with this. And he could not function in life because he was so used to the old blanket. My friends, God wants to do something new in our lives, amen? And to get rid of that old blanket, to take on the new. Old things passed away. And the Bible tells us there's a law of replacement. Jesus says here in verse one, he says, I'm giving you power and authority. And now watch this, verse two. This is powerful. Listen to what it says. Then, once he gave him the power and authority, which he gives to all of us as his children, he sent them out to tell everyone about what? The kingdom of God. He gave them the power. Of, remember, Jesus came to preach the kingdom. He came to share the kingdom. He, he came came to bring the kingdom, then he gave them power and authority to go do the same, to speak the kingdom. How many of you know we've got to proclaim the kingdom over our lives? Amen? You shall not die, you shall surely live. Right? Lay hands on the sick that they would recover. Prophesy over them that they have strength and they get a word from God. Amen? Pray with one another because two or three together can, move, can, can, can cause the blessings of God in our life. Speak to the mountain and it'll be removed. All of these things now become that, that newness that God brings into our life to proclaim the kingdom of God. And how do we get out of the old? We start proclaiming the new. It's that simple. Amen? We start declaring what the Bible says who we are. What's, what's Philippians 4.13 say? You need to... You need to, you know, oh, I memorized it. Good, now speak it. You know, oh, I memorized 100 scriptures. Declare them over your life. Say them now. Speak them. Pray them. I can do all things through Christ. Then stop there and pray. Lord, I can, I can get a better job. Lord, I can get promoted. Lord, I can become all that you want me to be. Lord, I can overcome this situation in my life. Lord, I can stop going back and doing wrong things. I can do all things through Christ. You've got to now not just say the scripture. You've got to let it be internalized in your life. Speak it. Say it. Run with it. Amen. Jabez, I love the book of, uh, the book of Jabez. Jabez, right? There's two, two, three scriptures out of all of First Kings or something like that, right? That make any sense. You know, be, so-and-so begat so-and-so begat so-and-so. And then right in the middle of it all is the, this, this Jabez who walked with God. You know, and he, he said, bless me indeed. Increase my territory. You know, uh, keep me from evil and causing pain on others. You know, this, this powerful three words sentence that tells us how to begin to proclaim the kingdom in the midst of bad kings and bad this and that, Jabez has a replacement. And what I'm saying to you is replacement comes when we start proclaiming the word of the Lord. Amen? So we have to learn to proclaim the word of God. Now, the word for power is an interesting word. It actually means in the Greek, it's dunamis. Um, I remember a, movie, a, a show we used to watch when we were kids with JJ. What was that one? He'd say dynamite, you know. Good times. Yeah, I used to watch that all the time. Good times. You say dynamite. Dunamis, power means like dynamite. Dynamite. When you proclaim, listen, when you proclaim the word of God, dynamite takes place. You start blowing up the enemy's camp. 
When you, when you proclaim a scripture into your family, into your life, power that he has given to you and now is released. Remember Jesus said, he said, somebody touched me and there was virtue, something left me, power had left me. Why? Because somebody reached out and touched the kingdom. And when we start to proclaim the kingdom, it's like throwing grenades into the enemy's camp. Going off. And the devil is running in every direction. Why? The Bible says, submit yourself to God. James 4, 7. Submit yourself to God. Resist the devil. Come on. Proclaim the power. And he will flee from you. Dynamite takes place when you start to proclaim the kingdom of God over your situation. And I know when we're so used to the old things and we've been so discouraged for a year or two months or, or five years, wherever we're at in life, it's hard to do something new. But you know how you do that? You do it one step at a time. Amen? We're doing 21 days, aren't we, of, of not complaining. How many have complained? Yeah, okay, I have to. So I, and, I've, and I've prayed over that. Come on, we've tried. We're still trying, right, not to complain for 21 days. Started last Sunday, right? You're like, shoot, I'm not going to be able to do this after I just complained going to my car after church. <laughs> so we have, to, we have to change and we start, you know, you mess up. At least you're aware of it. Change, amen? Lord, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. 1 John 4, 4, greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. 1 Corinthians 15, 57, but thanks be to God who gives me victory through my Lord Jesus Christ, amen? We now have the power, as Psalm 23, and I think it's verse 7, surely goodness and mercy are following me all the days of my life, hallelujah. Though I go through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil, for thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me, and you prepare a table before me and all the all of my presence of my enemies amen the enemy's trying to beat me up but i'm going to stay at the table of the word of the lord he's going to get me through and proclaim you have power do dynamite dunamis amen for the enemy he will he will he will flee when we when we speak the word of god now authority authority is a pretty inter interesting word exousia is the greek word i took four years of greek and i always say i'm going to use it on you once in a while Exousia. He said, what'd you learn in Greek? I said, I learned that Greek, it's still all Greek to me. <laughs> okay, never mind. That was dumb. All right. So authority. Exousia, which literally means superhuman. Exousia, authority, superhuman. In other words, when you proclaim the word of God, you become superman. And hopefully not with the same tights. Somebody shout amen to that. We, it also means a higher jurisdiction. So when we proclaim the word of God, power goes off like dynamite and exousia happens where we are now operating from a higher jurisdiction. Like when the, things go to the Supreme Court, it's the final decision. When we stand in the word of God and we proclaim the kingdom, we now don't operate on the courts of this earth. We don't operate by what so-and-so says or what whoever said, well, I've tried that before and it didn't work. I fished all night and I caught nothing. And Jesus says, well, do it again. Just throw it out on the other side. And they do it. And what didn't work now works. Why? Because they operated by the kingdom. They proclaimed and they operated in authority at a higher jurisdiction. When you start to proclaim the word of God, hallelujah, you are now operating from the jurisdictions of heaven, from the courts of God, because his word will not return void. It has ultimately all authority and power. How do I change my situation? Declare the word of God. Amen. Now, we hear this and we say, yeah, I know that's good. But it's different than knowing it and doing it. Right? Because what we end up doing is we, we hear it and we walk back into the same thing. We're all that way. It's our nature to do that. That's why we need each other. Iron sharpens iron. 
Share one another's burdens. You know, keep getting into Bible study. This thing, you got to walk out your salvation. It's, it's not a one-day thing. You might get blessed on a Sunday, but you need God Monday through Saturday. Amen? You need to walk it out. And you'll see God continuing to lift you up one step at a time. Isn't that good? Amen? So we now have a higher jurisdiction when we proclaim the gospel of the kingdom of God. That's what Jesus proclaimed. The gospel of the kingdom of God. The gospel is the good news. I'm declaring the good news. You, uh, you've lost everything, Job. You, you, you've lost your house, your kids, your animal, your livestock. And he says, naked I came into the world and naked shall I leave. God spoke, spoke the gospel in a horrible situation. Right? Horrible. You know? But yet, he proclaimed the kingdom. And at the end of it all, he says, Job, were you there when I made the foundations of the earth? Were you there when I made the stars? Were you there when I did all these things? Job says, "Uh -uh." (laughs) uh-uh. Loosely translated. And uh, he says, no, I was not there. And he says, he says, Job says, only you know, Lord. Proclaim the gospel of the kingdom. Only you, God, can turn my situation around. And I love it at the end of Job's life, at the last part of his, the book, it says, and Job received double for all of his troubles. <laughs> Come on, somebody. You might be going through it today, and you're like, Lord, how am I going to get out of this? I just want to bail out. I just want to give up. I just want to let it all go. I want to escape. You know, I think it was uh, in, in uh, song, I think it was in Psalms, and David says, oh, if I was a bird. It was a Job. Psalms, I think it's Psalms. He said, oh, if I was a bird with wings, I would fly far from my problems. He says, but only you, Lord, give strength. And I wouldn't want to run and fly somewhere where you don't want me to be. Yeah. Amen? Listen. You are in the Lord's hands. God is fighting for you and he's growing you up at the same time. How many know God can do, you know, some people say we can't think two things at the same time. But God can, right? I think women can do that pretty good, but, uh, right? You think, you know, stop that, you know, like my mom, you'd be driving and she'd be in the back seat, you know, you know, she goes, stop that. And, we, and she couldn't reach back. You know, so she'd hit the brakes and we'd come flying forward. He got you! You know. It's horrible. That's why I turned out like I did. Replacement. The law of replacement. I hope you guys get this. Proclaiming the kingdom. You have, a, you have power. Dunamis. Exousius. You have authority. When, when, you, when you speak the word of God, you might not see it. They're like spiritual bombs that go off against the enemy's camp. Some things are strongholds. A stronghold is something that holds on to you and will not let you go. It will just try to get in your mind. It sometimes will be like, feel like tentacles almost in your brain, just holding you like this, you know, messing with you. And if you'll just realize that God's given you power and authority over all of those things, that these strongholds can only be broken by the power of the kingdom of God, by daily confessing God, by daily proclaiming the word of the Lord, by daily prayers, by daily meeting together, Amen? Some things can only come out through prayer and fasting. There are some things that are so strong in our lives. Now, on the other side of that, I do believe God can free us from strongholds. How many believe that, right? These things that can free us. And I think most of us have been freed in some way or another, right? We're not completely free, it feels like at times, but we feel like we're we're freer than we used to be. Someone say amen to that. Anybody all the way free? Anybody almost free? All the way? No, I can't wait. Just messing with you. So we are all, we, we are all at that place. 
We, we, we go through these battles, our strongholds. And with that said, God can, over, you, he can deliver you from strongholds. At the same time, he can deliver you through strongholds. What, what do you mean? Well, Paul says, I prayed three times that this thorn in my flesh would leave. And I prayed three times that it, it didn't leave, but God answered me. And he said, my grace is sufficient for you. He says, I'm going to leave that in your life so that it will remind you to stay humble because I'm going to give you a lot of knowledge and wisdom in your life about the kingdom. That's my life. That's how I feel sometimes, you know, always under the, the, the battle of the Lord, of the enemy. But you know what? It's okay because God's replacing something. Come on. He's, he's letting me experience things so that I can help others who are experiencing similar things overcome them. Somebody shout amen. And some things you'll just have to know, God, it's okay. I want to be delivered. But Lord, if I am not delivered, then I'm going to use this to draw closer to you. You're going to be my cry. You're going to be my, my, my desire in it all. Come on, somebody. Because you know what? The enemy just will love you to say, oh, I can't get free. I just won't give up. No, you keep going. You keep going. Some things you will get over today. Some things you'll get over next week, next year. But if you'll keep walking in it, you'll have the victory. Even if it's still there in some way, you'll know how to overcome it when it comes. Amen? You'll put your mind on something new. You'll, you'll do what the Bible tells us to do. The law of replacement. And Jesus came. The kingdom, the kingdom of God is at hand. It's here for the law of replacement to come and replace the old with the new. It, the old wineskins can't take on the new wine. It has to have new wineskins. And all over this place, I believe that God wants us to have that new wineskins today. To, to trust God again. Can you imagine the disciples they fished all night out in, the Gal out in Galilee. We know what happened in John, right? When we went through the book of John here, they went out at night and they went to the other side. And what happened at night? A storm came. And here they are fishing all night in the, you know, in, in the Sea of Galilee. Who knows how, what they had to do and they caught nothing. Have you ever just went through it, man? You're just like, oh, I believe in God. And you come out, it was like, oh, man, I didn't even catch one fish. You know, I'm so disappointed. So disappointed. Well, and most people say, God, we've tried that before. Just don't do it again. I'll never do that again. No. If God tells you to do it, cast out again. He, he, he turned that second cast into a, a, a net of fish. Amen? Caught so many fish, it was going to break the net. It's going to break the net. And they, they brought that thing in. If they would have given up, they would never have seen what God had. And I'm telling you guys, don't give up. God will break through. This day may not be your day. Next Sunday might. Next year might. But if you'll keep going, God will turn some things around. The law of replacement. Amen? How many believe in for a replacement today? Come on. How many believe in for a replacement? Come on. Let's all stand to our feet if we can. All over this place. And we're going to just pray right now that this law of replacement is going to come on your life today. That God's going to help you to overcome. And you're going to see new things. Hallelujah. Did you know this is a true story that Aristotle, this philosopher of a long time ago, I'm not really into all the philosopher stuff, but what he did, he was very smart in his day as far as laws and things. But he said the heavier object, if you take two objects that are, that are you know, relatively heavy, but there was one that was heavier, the heavier one would drop and hit the ground first. And everyone just, well, he's so smart. It must be the way it goes. Until... Somebody else later decided, I'm going to go up to the Tower of Pisa and drop a five-pound weight and a one-pound weight. And they dropped it, and they hit the ground at the same time. Not what They just believed, that what, because he was smart, that surely the heavier one would hit. Now, I guess if you take a feather and something else, that wouldn't, be, wouldn't work. But, but, but the reality is we believe things that are not necessarily true. And we believe things about ourselves that are not true. 
And we believe things about God that are not true. God is on your side. He will never leave you and never forsake you. He corrects those that he loves. If you're not being corrected, then either you're not listening or not receiving it because God loves us so much he won't let us stay where we were. He'll replace it for something new. And I'm here to t- today to pray for some people that might just need a, a fresh, that, 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 that new wine to come on your life today. A new wine. And if you're here today and you just say, Pastor, I, I'm, I'm going to step in. I'm going to believe. I'm going to trust for that new wine. I'm going to put on new wine skins today. Remember, the Bible says, repent, believe in the kingdom. Repent and believe in the kingdom. That's all you're doing. Repent of the old. Let the old go. And you're just stepping into the new. If you're here today as we worship and you want to be prayed for, you want to see God replace some things, you're trusting God for something, and today is the day the kingdom of God is at hand, the gospel of the kingdom is at hand. If you're here today and you want to be prayed for, you want to make a stand today and believe God for that new wine to come, I want you quickly as we worship just to come and stand down here with me, and I'm going to pray with you in this house. Come on down. Just stand facing forward if that's you. Just come down. Let's sing this. We'll wait for you to come. Come on, just turn to the Lord. Just look to Him. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Come on, just worship Him with all your heart. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. Come on, just press in right now all over this place. Come on, just press in all over this place. Forget those things which are behind. Press into the new things that God has. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your hand upon my brother God today. Lord, I stand with him, Lord. I thank you, Father, that your new wineskins are coming today. The new is coming to replace the old. You've been faithful over a little. I'm going to make you ruler over much. In this world, but in the world to come. Don't lose heart and don't faint. For I am your strength and I am your source. I am the one who has brought you through. I am the one who brought you out of that place of misery. I am the one who has been your source and your strength. And I pray, Father, today that you would touch my brother God. And I pray for the newness to come. Holy Spirit, begin to fall fresh in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, fill him up. Newness, God. Dunamis, exousia. Lord, let the power come. God, right now, I just really feel he's going before you. Sometimes when you're walking in a field, it just looks all the same. You're walking in the wilderness, it looks all the same. But God says, I've gone before you, and I'm pushing out the enemy. When you declare the word of God, you're actually moving out you're pushing out the enemy and the lord is coming to push out the enemy that's been trying to discourage you your family the people around you that you love and i thank you for the fire of god to fall fresh upon my brother god touch him today give him strength in the mighty name of jesus hallelujah thank you father thank you father thank you for my friend god i just pray that you would touch her today and the Lord knows, He knows, He knows everything you've gone through and even the times when you felt rejected and you felt forgotten and you felt unappreciated. But the Spirit of God says to you, I'm your strength and I appreciate you and I love you and I'm going to raise you, but I'm going to restore, I'm going to restore what the enemy had tried to destroy. I'm going to restore to you the joy of your salvation. I'm going to restore to you 
relationship in every way. I'm going to restore to you the kingdom, for I have nothing but good for you, says the Lord. I pray, Father, that you bless her, God, today, that your hand be upon her, God, all the days of her life. I pray the anointing of the Holy Spirit, Father, to release her from the old things, and that, Father, today would be new wineskins, new wineskins, God, a new mindset, a new heart, a new, a new belief that, God, you are more than able. I thank you, Lord, you brought her through. You've been through in the last few years some really difficult things, but the Spirit of God is giving you strength in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I declare it and I speak it today. And I pray, Father, that you keep her body healthy. You encourage her, God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Any ailments or feelings in her body, God, that you would heal today. And I thank you, Father, that you're going to strengthen her, just, uh, just her intestines and different areas, Father, that you would give her supernatural strength upon her, God, in the mighty name of Jesus. And I thank you for it, God. Let your spirit come upon our friend, God, and her family all that she touches, Lord. Give her strength in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for your spirit upon this couple, God. Let your hand be upon them. The law of replacement to come right now. The law of replacement to come right now. I pray that, Father, that you would show them and, 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 and bring clarity in this season. And then for you've been asking for clarity and for wisdom. Because you want you want to make sure that all that you're doing is what God wants you to do and I pray that you just bring clarity and wisdom God in this hour in the name of Jesus hallelujah and and I heard of Matthew 6 6 it says um, go into your room and pray and when you go in shut the door shut the door so you, God wants you to shut the door to your depression or worries or fear to go in and shut the door to those things and, and shut it and, and let God just minister to you and let him work it out. He's going to work it out in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I thank you for the peace of God that's falling upon her right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for, for, for your hand to be upon Mariel today. I pray for peace upon her body, supernatural strength upon her today. I pray, Father that the enemy is such a liar. He's been, he's been trying to discourage you in your thoughts, but the Spirit of God is your strength, and he's gonna turn that around even now in Jesus' name. And I thank you, Father, that, that her, the, the Bible says that he'll bring perfect peace to those whose minds are fixed on the Lord. And he'll bring perfect peace for those whose minds are fixed on the Lord. And if you'll fix your mind, just your mind's always on God, but just fix it now. Just fix it on the Lord. He's going to turn the situation around in the name of Jesus. I lift up her family, her boys to you, and I thank you, Father. You're going to touch them, God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And I thank you, Father. I thank you for victory today. I thank you, Father, for greater wisdom, greater wisdom. Um, when I say this, Elias, you might kind of, like Sarah, uh, she named her, her, her son Isaac, laughter. And you might laugh at this, but um, this is what God, I felt God wants you to know, is he's gonna raise you up and you're gonna be a teacher of the word of God. And there's a difference between a preacher and a teacher and a pastor, you know, with a, a prophet, apostle. There's a teacher. There's those that teach. And you're gonna be a teacher of the word of God. And God doesn't want you to worry like, oh, do I preach this way? You can have times to preach, but he's going to cause you to, he's going to cause you to teach. And you're going to teach the word of God and you're going to help those and instruct those. And God says, do so with love and tenderness. And, and even when you're solid on a point to show mercy and grace to help others come into that understanding, the Lord will strengthen you and use you. And as you begin to proclaim the kingdom, he's going to fix some things in your life, in your home, in your marriage, your kids, in every area. Lord, new wineskins to come right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I speak it and I thank you for it. Hallelujah. Father, touch my brother, God, Sean. I pray, Father, that you would encourage this man. And that, Father, today, 
that Lord, the gifts and talents that are within him, but God would begin to, to manifest in greater ways. And Lord, I thank you that Father, that you've given him the wisdom and the mind to understand hard matters, difficult things, figuring out things on computers and this and that. You've given him a, a mind to figure things out. And I pray that, Father, that also in the midst of that, that, Lord, he has desires of his own that he's trying to figure out for his own life. And I can sense that, God, that he needs, uh, uh, Lord, he's just been asking you an open door, wisdom, uh, show me the way. And I thank you, Father, that you're going to help my brother, God, that, Lord, in the intricate matters that, that he, is under, he can understand, Lord, this is an area that, God, he needs to understand. I pray that you would help him to get the wisdom that he needs in this hour in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. For you shall rise up in the land. And the enemy will not have the better part, for I am going to bring strength into your life. Strengthen your bones, strengthen your body, strengthen your spirit. Hallelujah. And you too are a teacher. You're a teacher. You're going to teach others. You're going to help others. And not only about the word, but I saw you teaching and like in a, in a, with computers or this or that. I don't know what it was I saw, but I saw you in a, in a business or, or working and you were teaching other people and you were helping other people and you find joy when lights go on in other people's hearts and minds about things. And so, Lord, I pray that you touch him today and give him strength in the name of Jesus. New wineskins, Lord. Thank you for my brother Javier. Lord, let your hand be upon him today. I pray that all the days of his life, God, that, Lord, you would guard his heart and guard his mind. This is what I heard. I heard the Lord say, I'm gonna, I want you to guard your heart and your mind. And I'm in the Lord himself is guarding you. And I thank you that, Father, you said that out of the issues of the heart, out of the issues of the heart, that, that things are established. And I thank you that, God, I say this because this is what I just saw, is that you have such a good heart. You have a good heart for people. You have a good heart for your wife. You have a good heart for things around you. You have a good heart, and you just want the best. And I thank you that, Father, when, he, when, when someone wants the best, sometimes the enemy comes in and brings the worst. He tries to bring the discouraging thoughts and discouraging things. But the Spirit of God says to you that I'm going to lift you up. I'm going to lift you up, and I'm going to carry you on eagle's wings. I'm going to carry you on eagle's wings. And you, right now, you're on eagle's wings. You should not be here today. You've been carried by the Spirit of God, and he's lifted you up higher than the very enemy that's trying to discourage you. And you're going to soar above. You're going to soar above. And as, as God lifts you in these coming months, he's going to lift you up. You're going to see a greater picture. You're going to see a greater picture that all that you went through, like Joseph, all that, all that I went through, God, you meant it for evil, but God intended it for good. And God's intending all that you're going through for good in the mighty name of Jesus. Touch my brother and strengthen him today in the name of Jesus. New wineskins, God. We thank you for it in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, Father. We thank you for Deborah. And let your hand be upon her. Supernatural strength. This is what I heard. Sometimes we try to figure everything out and some things are not meant to figure out, but to trust God. Some things are not meant to figure out, but to trust God. And what I mean by that, the understanding of it doesn't come in in the figuring out, it comes in trusting God. Because, because when you get to the other side, it all makes sense, it'll all be figured out. When he gets you to the other side, it'll all be figured out. So the Lord just wants to, you, I just really sense this, be still and know that I am God. This is what I heard. Be still and know that I am God and I'm your God. And use, use the gifts that are in you. You have a heart of compassion. And sometimes the fear keeps you back from the compassion. And the Lord says to you, don't operate on fear, but operate on compassion. And as you step out and encourage somebody else, as you step out and lay hands, as you step out and help somebody or give a, a bag of food, the Lord says, I'm going to use that and I'm going to turn things around in their life, but also in yours in the name of Jesus. For I've given you a heart of compassion. 
for my people. In the name of Jesus, you feel even your life, even your family, even your children, the things you, you, you feel because you've gone through it. You've had to go through things and God's allowed that because you're the person of compassion that you can have compassion to others who, who need help and encouragement. So strengthen her. I thank you for new wineskins to fall fresh upon our sister today in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's all one more time. Let's just sing this song. Hallelujah. And let's just sing, Lord, I love you. Let's sing, Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. Turn that guitar up just a little bit. Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. There you go. Lord, I love Come on, just all over this place. Come on, we're having new wineskins on us today. In the name of Jesus, thank you for these new wineskins, God. Lord, we're going to believe and trust you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. Oscar, come up here and just say a final prayer for us if you can. Yeah. Um, before I close in prayer, I wanted to share something with you guys. Um, some uh, four words that I want you to remember and then it's stuck in my head as well <clears throat> when the enemy comes and tells you remind him <clears throat> that you are loved you are called <laughs> you are chosen and you're equipped amen amen so heavenly father in Jesus name Lord God almighty we thank you Lord for your word heavenly father um, that dynamis, the, the, the dynamite work, Father God, that we, we heard this morning, Lord. Let us, Father God, let us stay in our heart, just like uh, King David said, Father God. You were uh, hidden in my, in my heart, so I won't sin against you, Lord. <clears throat> so, Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Father God, because you were, Father God, is what, is what take us, Father God, to the next Thursday, to the next Sunday, Lord. That is what carries us, Lord. And that's what, you know, that's what your son did, Father God. You know, he, uh, he came and, and he's the living word, Father God. Let us, Father God, as we close this morning, Father God, and, and Father God, bring us to the next Thursday and the next Sunday, Father God, in, in that power, the authority that you have given us, O oh Lord, as we learn this morning, Father God. That, Father God, let us, uh, uh, as I was talking to my brother this morning, Father God, let us, Father God, uh, walk, walk, Father God, what we, what we say, Father God. Let us do, Father God, what we hear, Father God, not just hearers, but doers as well, Lord God Almighty, that love, Father God, is not just a word, Father God, it's an action, it's a verb. And isn't that what Jesus is? He's a verb, right? He, we, we must walk what we learn. In Jesus' holy name, Heavenly Father, teach us, Lord, and equip the, just like you have, Father God. We are equipped, Father God, to bring the gospel, Father God, to this fallen and, 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 and dark world, Father God. And, and Father God, let us be, Father God, the light, Father God, the soul of this world, Father God. Without the soul, Father God, the, 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 this world has no taste, Father God. In Jesus' holy name, Father God, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord God Almighty, because, Father God, you're the one, Father God, that paid the price for us. And, and, and we thank you, Lord, as we walk in your, in, your, in your love, in your holy presence, Father God. We thank you, Father God, as we are, we are new in your word. We are a new creation, your word says, Father God. We thank you, Lord. Let us walk in that, Lord God Almighty. In Jesus' holy name, we thank you, Lord, because, Father God, your love and your mercy should be, Father God, with us the rest of your, our life. In Jesus' holy name, we pray. We give you all the honor and all the praise. And everybody says, amen.